Okay. Uh, ready? It's uh, loading now. Hmm. Okay, we are live. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to the 2022 National Investment Challenge. Today we are at our very first webinar with Tom Yuan, SGX trainer. Uh, without much further ado, I'll let Tom start this web kickstart this webinar. Tom, on to you now. All right. Thank you very much, uh, organizer. Thank you, for Guan. Um my name is Tom. Along the way, I will introduce myself a little bit more, so don't have to worry if you don't know enough about me. Um, I start to understand uh, that this is an educational month, a series of things uh, kicked off from Monday, all right, with the Ask Me Anything. And I'm the next in line to uh, give you the topic on introduction slash basics of technical analysis. All right. Mm, well, I am a uh, trainer of SGX for many, many years. I have taught uh, uh, many people, given many talks on TA, but very often I would like to address uh, my specific audience because sharing the same thing to young people, old people, beginner and experienced people, there can be subtle differences. And this opening ceremony, thank you to organizer for inviting me, has given me the insight uh, to know more about the audience so I can tailor today's session uh, more appropriately to address your needs. So from that opening ceremony, I realized that this is a, a so-called uh, investment challenge uh, targeted for the youth. So my audience primarily would be you, all right, the youth. So I'm trying to bring myself back all the way to 30 years ago uh, when I was still youth. And then uh, I started learning technical analysis and things like that. So what was my uh, concept at that point in time? Yeah, so I will share that with you uh, to also help to impact you. And hopefully I will be able to inspire you to continue uh, picking up this very wonderful uh, thing called technical analysis. All right. Uh, the specific needs are, uh, do you actually want me to share something with you so that you could acquire knowledge so that you can win the game? Yeah? Or is it for the purpose of uh, making money in the long run? Now, I can immediately hear some people say, yeah, of course, for both. Lah, if you can share something with me, right? So that I can win the game. Uh, and then also... Um, uh, to, to, to make money in the long run, that would be good. Now, then there is a small little problem because the current market condition, uh, the macro picture, is not exactly an investment uh, so-called environment. All right. So therefore, I share with the organizer, investment challenge, uh, this particular name, uh, needs to be addressed a little bit more. Now, with due respect, I believe many people have already talked about that, but I would like to uh, uh, share my opinion uh, to first of all, uh, highlight the difference between investing and trading. Now, I realize that this has been shared by many different people, but for my presentation today, uh, it is important for you to take note of three main points. Number one, investing is actually long-term, yeah, whereas trading is short-term. Now, I'm not actually referring to the strategy per se. You need to know that the results that you are getting for investment, you have to look at the results uh, over long-term. That it will be meaning meaningful. All right. If you have got no patience to look for long term, uh, then you are not investor. Now, trading is shorter term. Therefore, trading results is immediate cause and effect. If you ask me how short is short, as a trader, I can put on a position and then within one or two minutes, right, whether it hit my target or I don't like it, I get out. It can be as short as a couple of minutes. Yeah. So that is one thing you need to take note, investing long term, trading short term. Now, the second important point is uh, investor talk. When the market direction is up, therefore it is good, right? When people say, oh, today's market is good, it means it is up. And today's market very bad, huh? very bad, huh? it means it is down. These are called investment talk, which is single direction. Trading, we have both direction. We can either long or we can short, right? I believe you already understood this terminology, yeah, long and short. So up and down, also good if we are correct. But if we are wrong, right? Up and down, also bad, yeah? So you have to take note of this second uh, difference. And the third one, 
the third one, uh, usually investing, you are using a sum of money whereby uh, you set aside yeah, for long-term growth. Whereas for trading, uh, very often we will utilize this term called margin or leverage, which you are going to do for this uh, investment game because you're using CFD. It has the feature of margin and leverage. I will not elaborate too much. Again, I will leave it to the organizer to educate you more on what is margin and leverage. But if you were to ask me, Tom, so is margin or leverage good? The way I answer would be margin and leverage uh, is going to be good if you are good. Margin and leverage is going to be very, very bad if you are bad. So it all depends on your knowledge and whether you know how to use it or not. All right. So do take note of these three main points that differentiate between investing and trading. And depending on whether you are an investor or a trader, looking at TA uh, would serve a different purpose. All right. Okay, so my name is Tom Yun, trading symbol YCK. I'm wearing a red jacket, yeah? Uh, SGX trainer. Now, this title uh, doesn't tell you anything about me. There are a lot of SGX trainers. We all look different. We have different background. We do different things. Uh, and we share with you our various experiences. So I'm going to share with you a little bit more about me so that you can more benefit yeah, from my sharing today when you understand my beliefs, the beliefs behind my sharing, okay? Now, so how can you benefit? benefit from my beliefs. This is when I need to go back a little bit of history to tell you that I graduated in 1986 and US computer science. Yeah. Do a quick mental calculation. Uh, I'm probably older than your your, your father, uh, your parents. All right. Anyway, that is to tell you that I've got no background in the financial market. I'm a comm science grad, NUS first cohort. After that, I worked for about five years and then uh I found out about the financial market and I jumped into the Samex floor and start my career there. During Sunday's networking, uh, some people ask me, so Tom, what is the criteria for you to be employed by Cymex? All right, they got it wrong. So I need to clarify this to a lot of people. Yeah, uh, my job as a local is not an employment. I've got no pay, no pay. I do not service customers and I do not collect any commission. In other words, I've got no income. In a very candid manner, I take my money, I go to the floor and trade my own account. If I make money, that is my income. And if I lose money, my savings goes down. So that is what I did since 1992. So I am a full breed trader. All right. So hearing from me will be my experience uh, of what I did over the last more than 30 years. Okay. Therefore, another important thing, I responded to such an advertisement from Cymex at the point in time, it's called Cymex, to that business opportunity uh, for enterprising individuals. Now, the key word is enterprising individuals. If you were to ask me, Tom, what is the important trademark to become a successful trader? The word is there, enterprising. Uh, most of you are tertiary uh, students, all right? Uh, polytechnic, university. I believe you understand what this term means, yeah? But I don't want you to understand just in your head. I want you to totally internalize what is the meaning of enterprising and whether you are indeed an enterprising individual. If you are, you will stand a good chance uh, along this path of uh, uh, this journey to become a trader. If you are not, then you might want to consider a little bit more. Okay, all right. Uh, you are familiar with this slide, yeah? That's called disclaimer. I'm not going to talk about it the usual way, but basically, uh, the disclaimer is for my sharing of technical analysis today, yeah, it represents my view, my values stemming from my experience. A lot of people can be talking about the same candlestick, the same moving average, but we all have different background and different motivation behind the way we look at all these TA. So today, you are learning from my beliefs, value system, as well as experience. So that is uh, how I would explain this disclaimer thing. All right, before I start the proper uh, uh, talking about TA, uh, it's also important for you to know the motivation of why I started TA and along the way, I persevere and try to hone my skill until today, yeah? Now, what is a chart, a financial market chart? It is not just uh, plotting the price against a time, right? It is more than just uh, data collection. It is actually technical analysis to represent the behavior of all the players in the market creating that price movement. Now, uh, I'm not going to give you a Wikipedia definition, but there are two important things I wish to share with you. Uh, hopefully, it will stick on to you to motivate you to continue to learn about technical analysis. The chart itself. Now, very often, uh, we want to know what the big boys are doing. All right, We want to know what they know. But the very fact that we won't know what they know, if big boys uh, let you know what they know, they are not big boys already. But the important Interesting thing is, big boys can hide what they know from you, but they cannot hide 
what they do, right? Because what they do will be reflected in the chart as price action. So for the trade IR, we, we will be able to capture all these price action to reflect the action of the big boys. Therefore, leaving behind the footprints of bulls and bears, yeah? Okay, the second important thing about TA, that it provides clue to market timing. Although I know that some people uh, debunk this, yeah? they do not agree that you can time the market. But if you get enough experience, you will realize that indeed TA yeah, can give you decent market timing every now and then. Some people are better at applying, so they are more accurate. Some people are not so good, but nevertheless, you would experience a very wonderful market timing, which only TA can give, not any other discipline. All right. So I hope that uh, by sharing this with you, for what motivated me to continue learning TA uh, can also help to motivate you to start this journey to learn technical analysis. Now, finally, during the Sunday's session, uh, uh, our minister Ong Yi Kang actually mentioned this, right? Everything that's good, that's bad. Yeah? Later, he will use this good and bad to explain a lot of things. I would like to borrow this as well. So I will use this throughout my session today. At the same time, Ms. Carol Fong also uh, more than once uh, mentioned invest in yourself. So I'm also going to borrow these two terms and highlight them because I think these are important for your journey for this month, for the next two months when you're playing the game, as well as for your subsequent uh, journey, yeah, embarking into uh, being an investor or a trader. All right. Very well. So that is about 11 minutes of presentation. Uh, now, let me explain to you what I what do I understand by this investing or trading? Now, to me, uh, when I was new, right, very, very soon, yeah, I start to realize that investing and trading is none other than just a number game. The number would fluctuate up and down, up and down, up and down. It has been fluctuating long before you were born, and it will continue to fluctuate long after you die. Yeah. During this very this very brief period when you're on earth, uh, and you decide to participate, right? So you join in the fluctuation of this game, of, of, of this number. So therefore, it is actually a number game that deals with direction. If you are in rhythm with the same direction, then you will be able to make money. People call you a winner. But if you're off rhythm with this number direction, all right, you would probably lose money. Yeah, People call you a loser, but I would rather call you a contributor. So there's only two outcomes. Either you take money and call, yeah, and call a winner, or you lose money and I call you a contributor. So therefore, understanding the premise, the first most important thing, yeah, whether you use TA or anything else, is to identify trend. That means, what is the direction of this fluctuation, right? Is it up or down? Okay, at Sikora says, yeah, I quote, the trend is your friend except at the end when it bends. Internalize this word, the trend is your friend. So, therefore, I'm going to next go into the TA to explain to you some of the quantifiable manner to uh, identify trend. Now, this is from Dow Theory, yeah? If you are keen, you can go and Google yourself Dow Theory to find out more. Dow theory itself has got six principles. This is the first principle, my favorite. So I borrow it and I teach using Dow theory to identify trend. The market, of course, you know, oh, I know if the price keep going up is uptrend, the price keep going down is downtrend, right? But you will see that very often, uh, the price doesn't travel in one straight line. It would fluctuate its way up and it will fluctuate its way down. Yeah, It doesn't go in the straight line up or down. So in this fluctuation, uh, you would identify a certain swing high point and a swing low point. All right. So what happened is if a subsequent high goes higher than the previous high, this is called a higher high. And if the low also higher than the previous low, this is what we call a higher high and higher low. So once you identify a higher high and higher low, by definition, the trend is up bias. So conversely, when you have a high low form and the market take on a lower low, and take on a lower high, right? By definition, the market is downtrend bias. Now, this is Dow theory first principle. Very objective manner to identify trends. So market can either do higher high, higher low to suggest the trend is up, or lower high, lower low to suggest the trend is down, or the market can be doing around similar high and similar low to form a sideways market. So do take note, all right? There are three kinds of trend movement, uptrend movement, downtrend movement, or sideways trending movement. Okay, so with that understanding, I would be showing you first and I will be continuing to show you this particular chart. Huh? This is the STI index chart. Now, 
why I decide to show you this and start with this is because I remember a story when I was rather new, right? I read a lot of books, uh, and I attend also a lot of courses uh, to, 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 to upgrade myself. I remember one particular uh, trainer actually mentioned that he is very good at fundamental analysis. He is very good at selecting good companies. But after a few years, he still cannot make money, all right? Until he start to realize one important mistake that he, he discovered. Now, he discovered that uh, uh, selecting good companies itself is not good enough. You need to understand the macro picture. Because if the macro picture is bullish, typically you will have the blue chip stocks going up and then followed by mid cap and then followed by the penny stock. So that is the standard SOP of how a bull market would play out itself. On the other hand, if the market become bearish, basically everything would go down, right? Almost nothing would be spared. No matter blue chip stock, also add one more color becomes blue black, right? become blue black chip. So therefore, he started to realize that understanding the macro picture plays an important part on how you uh, play the market, right? Uh, then you go and do a proper stock selection. Now, so after, if you understand that, this is what I'm trying to help you do, yeah? To understand the macro picture because uh, what you're going to do is, for the sake of the game, right? After this month of education, you are going to take care of the month of October, November, yeah? So what is the macro picture over that next two months is going to determine your strategy, whether you wish to be a buyer or a seller or whatever, all right? So let's start with the macro picture STI. Now, basically, yeah, you have the world macro picture, yeah? What's the general uh, sentiment and individual countries macro picture. Every country will be represented by their own index, uh, like Hong Kong uh, represented by Hang Seng. You have the Nikkei that belongs to Japan. All right, you have Singapore the STI. And I wish all of you know what STI is. Huh? okay. So STI is a blue chip stock that is the uh, financial uh, uh, barometer of our country's financial health. Yeah. So therefore, if we were to look at STI, can you identify what is the trend? What is the trend based on Dow theory? Okay, which means uh, based on what I talked about previously, higher high, higher low, low high, low low, or is it a sideway, right? Are you able to identify? I will pause for about three to five seconds to let you look, yeah? Okay, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. Now, and it doesn't matter if, you, if you're different from me. Eh? So I would need to scroll a little bit back so that I, would, I need to use the left to help me establish the right, yeah? I repeat this phrase. TA is to use the left yeah, to help me determine the right. So therefore, I go all the way back until I can see in 2019, it is a sideway move. All right, This is about the same high, the same low. It was sideway for one whole year. The whole year of 2019 is sideway until the COVID brought it down. yeah, And then the rest of the world market actually recovered. But Singapore actually uh, stayed low for about half a year until November. Then it went up again to give you higher low, higher high. It started an uptrend. And and what do you see over here? We are back into a sideway range that is similar to the range in 2019. Okay, so based on Dow theory, uh, on higher, higher, low, low, high, low, low, you can actually at one glance see where the trend tendency is. All right. Okay, now uh, investing is a number game. Yeah, so identifying trend. Is there any other ways to identify trend other than Dow theory? That would lead me to my second topic that is called moving average okay moving average so establishing direction using moving average first of all my question is what is moving average yeah i'm not referring to a wikipedia definition uh, uh it is calculated based on whatever or whatever now it's important first and foremost to understand the concept the psychology the 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 logic behind all this indicator moving average uh, the way i define it it represents the collective fair value all right it is the collective fair value. If you don't understand, don't worry, I will, de I will define later. And the most important message, if you wish to use moving average, is whether the price is staying above or staying below. Or otherwise, I can use the term doing premium or doing discount to the fair value. Okay. Now, I'm going to explain uh, using a very candid, uh, normal day live example uh, as, a, as an analogy to explain the concept of moving average. All right, over the last 10 years that I've been teaching uh, uh, technical analysis to a lot of people, I would typically come to this portion. I ask them, all right, what do you think is the price, is the fair price of a plate of chao kui tiao, all right, chao kui tiao, uh? So typically, 
over the last 10 years, the answer would be, some people say $2.50, yeah? some people will say $3, some say $3.50, some say $4. All right, so depending on where you stay and where you go, I have this whole range from $2.50 all the way to $4, right? If I take this sample price yeah, and I average them, I'll probably get a price of about $3.20. So the fair value average of a plate of char kway is $3.20. Yeah? So therefore, why we used to eat char kway $3.00. Mm, it's, it's pretty fair. And it's slightly cheaper than fair value, $3.00. $4.00 mm, above fair value is considered expensive. All right? So we might consider not wanting to eat. So you go around Singapore, you look for char kway that is $3.00 or cheaper. And above that, typically, most people are like, not willing to pay. Yeah. Now, that is the concept of fair value. But today, over the last two sessions, during the, the, the Sunday uh, uh, get-together session plus all other sessions, you hear this word inflation. They keep popping up. Uh, putting uh, the youth, uh, don't think you are the one that is suffering inflation. Uh, it affects everybody, including adults. All right. So if today, yeah, I just completed a course on Saturday, just a few days ago, right? I did a part one course. I asked my participant again, what is the fair value for a price of chakwe tiao? Today, the answer is different. Yeah, I have no longer people telling me $2.50, $3. Some people say $4. Some say $4.50. Some say $5. Some even say $6. So if I were to take this sample price and I average them, you will get an average of around close to $5. So today, the average of chao kui tiao fair value is around 5 So therefore, if you can eat chao kui tiao at $4, it is considered below average. So it is cheap. All right? Now, so can you see, previously, uh, $4 is considered expensive but today a $4 is considered cheap because you're referencing to a fair value. If you understand this analogy and this concept, uh, the, uh, a movie average planted on a chart yeah, is to tell you where the fair value is. All right? Now, what is the significance of this? You would see the price either doing above or below. But unlike, unlike the normal day life whereby we determine whether it's cheap or expensive, there, there is some significance, yeah? The keyword, therefore, is staying above. Why is the price able to stay above or doing premium to the fair value? That is because the big boys are willing to buy above fair value, all right? Now, do remember another term. Retails do not create the market, although we participate. Very often, the market being pushed up, yeah, new high, new high, new high, or being sold down and crash, it is driven by the big boys. They have the power to move the market. We only uh, uh, join in, yeah, join in the flow. So therefore, for the market to be able to consistently stay above, keyword stay above, generally the big boys are willing to pay premium. Therefore, market is considered bullish. Tendency of price going up is higher. Whereas if you think it is cheap, all right, if you think it's cheap, that is because the big boys are selling a discount. The fair value is $4, yeah? The big boys are willing to sell at $3. You think it is cheap, you buy. Next moment, you can buy $2, $1, $0.50 because the big boys are dumping. So therefore, to help you recollect again, all right, a moving average applied onto a chart indicate where the fair value is. If price is above or doing premium, trend direction, up bias. If it is doing below, trend direction, down bias, all right? Okay, so... The other concept of moving average is the number. So therefore, you can see that there are people with different lines on the moving average. Yeah? Now, uh, blue is the five period, 13, 21. I'm just using a random number to illustrate. Yeah? So people call it fast, uh, fast and slow. Well, the smaller the number, the faster the moving average is. Faster meaning that it will stick very closely to the movement of the price. As the number gets bigger, it will get slower and it will react less to the price. Yeah. Now, typically, if someone were to straight ask a question, so is fast better or slow better? Well, everything that is good and that is bad. So if there is one better, then you won't use the rest. All right. So depending on the purpose and the needs of different people using different moving averages, the fast moving average has the good point of it react faster. All right, but it has got a bad point of more noise. When the market is not very trendy, you it will be very choppy. It will chop you up. So that is the good thing of reacting faster, and the not so good thing that is more noise. The slow one, on the other hand, is more stable, right? It is as compared to the fast one, more noise, this is more stable, but it reacts slower. So you can see that the fast and slow, the good and bad actually complement each other. Yeah. Now, so with this backdrop. I'm not going to talk about academic uh, knowledge of moving average, but let's do some very practical application. 
So understanding the fair value, I'm going to straight away dive into what the funds use, all right? What the funds use. Typically, it is generally accepted by everyone that the funds see 200 period moving average on a daily chart. 200. Uh, although, again, I can hear some voice say that, oh, they also use 50, 100, 200, but uh, it doesn't matter for other parameter. But this 200 EMA generally represents the fair value from the institution's point of view. So therefore, now let's take a good look uh, at the STI. This is the same STI chart. Uh. Again, span all the way back to 2019, all right? When the market go above, below, above, below, above, below. What does it tell you? Yeah, it cannot stay above, it cannot stay below. So therefore, this is a sideways market. When the market goes sideways, it will go premium discount, premium discount, premium discount. All right. For one whole year, for one whole year of 2019, until the COVID fundamental caused the whole world to crash. All right. Therefore, you can see how over here, when the market started crashing, it is below fair value. It is cheap. Yeah. But while it is cheap, people continue to dump, right? Cheaper and cheaper and cheaper until when the low is formed, right? Then many of the other markets in the world recovered and took new high. They took new high, breaking the pre-COVID high. But Singapore market cannot even go back to the fair value. So what does it tell me and what does it tell you? That the big boys are not buying premium. They are not even buying to the fair value. Below fair value, they are still willing to sell discount. All right. That shows how retarded our market is. Yeah. Now, for whatever fundamental reasons, uh, the way I would explain it, the big boys prefer to buy other market which they think has got more potential. Therefore, they're willing to pay premium. And at the same time, they are drawing funds out of our market. Therefore, they are willing to sell discount, okay, until November. So, it dragged for six months doing discount until November when Biden got elected, yeah? Then the whole world leveraging on the US printing money, all right, the stimulus package, the whole world together rallied. And therefore, you can see this evident from the chart when the market start to surface above the fair value, all right? Where the market go above, and you find that it's willing to go higher and higher and higher. Who created this? It's not individual, uh, not retail, uh, institution. This is the point whereby you can see that the institution are willing to pump their money back into local market. So therefore, they are paying up the price and making it go into premium, all right? So do you agree that we do have a sense of timing involved when you talk about technical analysis? And from there on, the market do a higher low, yeah, higher high, and continue its uptrend. All the way, you can see that it's being supported by the fair value a few times until the middle of this year, when generally the whole world experienced a very weak second quarter, April, May, June, yeah, whereby we also got sold down. Okay, this is when we went below and we resurfaced up again and we are back at the fair value. <laughs> Excuse me. I printed this chart yesterday. Eh? I need to prepare all this by yesterday. So anyway, today the STI did not close too much difference from uh, where it was yesterday. So we are still around there. All right. Okay. So therefore, this is what the funds use. Yeah. Now, how about me? I see what the funds see. I know whether they are bullish or they are bearish or whether they are sideways. But this is too slow for me. Too slow for the individual trader, especially when the market is very far away from the fair value, the top side or the bottom side. So I want a faster one. For a faster one to define a fair value for the individual, right? We have the uh, luxury to get in and out more frequently compared to the institution. So therefore, we need a faster moving average. All right, I was contemplating what to give you, yeah? Something for easier for you to use. Uh, I changed my mind. Lah. I, I just tell you what I use. Uh, I've been using this uh, for many, 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 many years, yeah? So if you like it, you can also take it. I use a pair, one pair, a 35 SMA plot together with a 55 EMA. So it's not a single line for me to define a fair value, but I use a pair to define a band, yeah? You can look at it as a band, and if you shade it, inside is blue color, or you can treat it as a river, all right, a river. So if the price is above both of them, yeah, above this band, that is when it is doing premium. When it is below the band, it is doing discount. And when it is inside the band, right, it is basically uh, quite comfortable fighting at the fair value itself. Yeah. So therefore, this is what I see. And I would 
uh, trade my decision based on this primarily. Of course, I also need to look at what the funds are seeing. All right. So now everything that's good, that's bad. If you can balance all the good and bad uh, uh, in a more effective manner, uh, generally it will be uh, you experience more good, lah, huh? more good than bad. All right. So you can see the current situation. What are we doing now? We are doing a sideways, sideways, sideways in 2019. After that, it went discount to both of them. Yeah, it tried to go up, but still below the fair value of my individual uh moving average until it start to go above, followed by above, right? Riding on my fair value to a certain high level before retracing down, supported by the fund's fair value until now, my fair value and the fund's fair value have converged into a point here. And STI is comfortably staying there to let the rest of the world do the fight for direction. So this is our current situation. Now, you might want to go back and continue uh, to create a STI chart and then uh, see how the STI progress from here onwards until before your game starts. All right. Okay. So therefore, uh, with that, I have shared with you two ways of establishing trend, yeah? one using Dow theory and the other one using moving average. So now the next question is, so where do I participate? All right, specifically, where do I enter a trade? Let's talk about entry first. Huh? Um, if you somehow are familiar, now just now uh, I talk about moving average, right? It defines the fair value. If price is on top, is bullish bias. So I would like a bullish bias, the price to come back down to the fair value, offer support, I buy at a fair value, yeah? If it is below, I would like the price to come back to the fair value, resisted, and I sell at the fair value. In another words, using moving average, you try to time your entry as close to the moving average as possible, or better still, at the moving average itself, all right? So that would be where I participate. However, uh, doing TA for 30 years, uh, learning all the different things, get confused and after that clarity and confused again and clear again, I have uh, decided that TA actually comprises of three basic building blocks. I call DLP, yeah, which I will share with you today when you're new. Do try to remember, when you look at technical analysis, uh, uh, once you understand that whatever you learn is either trying to tell you D, L or P or some of them, then it will be a lot easier and clearer uh, with this learning journey. Now, D stands for direction, all right? Down theory, moving average, offers me a direction. It tells me a direction whether it is bullish bias or bearish bias, yeah? So that would be the purpose uh, to help you establish direction. Next, L stands for level. Level is to tell me where to participate, all right? The market keep jumping up and down, up and down, up and down. Don't try to anyhow jump in. You must know at a good place to participate to increase your edge and your advantage. Now, just now, I already mentioned moving average is a level for you to consider entering, yeah, whether as a support or a resistance. So it is a moving level. Next, I'm going to talk to you about static level, which I call SR line, all right? SR stands for support resistance. Resistance, now for all the beginners, uh, resistance refer to a place whereby the market goes up until a point whereby it finds difficulty going higher. So we will say that, oh, it has encountered resistance, yeah? So that is the terminology. And if the market were to drop, right, until a point whereby it cannot go down anymore due to whatever reason, yeah, whether the buying is very strong or the selling no longer that strong, the market has found support. So this term support resistance refer to uh, market reaching a high or reaching a low, right, at least for the time being. Now, typically, uh, I will not use the term resistance or support per se for a very important reason because once you use the term resistance or support you tend to become a little bit too committed to the fact that you think market cannot go up or cannot go down so i like to use the term sr line all right any line is a sr line typically all those lines that are below the market has the potential to be a support yeah uh, to be confirmed right and any lines above has the potential to be resistance so i have sr line resistance above and sr line potential support below all right we look at the same chart again, huh? the same STI chart from sideways to down to up and then sideways again. Now, so how do I draw my lines? I can have a lot of lines, but for this chart so far, I have these two. All right, immediately I can hear. So, Tom, 
why do you draw that line based on what? Yeah, aga aga or what? Uh, of course, uh, technical analysis can be a science, it can be an art. Some people are very good at doing aga aga aga. You ask them how, uh, they say very nice law, right? I don't know how to teach you, but I draw law. But otherwise, um, very often we would like to have some quantifiable method to at least give us a guide. So therefore, my guide, right? My guide for drawing a SR line is to have level tested at least twice. Level tested at least twice. Yeah, when I'm teaching, uh, I, I like to say in Chinese, I say san dian yi xian. San dian yi xian means to use three points to connect a line. Okay, again, tertiary student, you can immediately, uh, 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 I can hear you protest, protest, right? Why you need three points? You need only two points to draw a line. What? You are right. You only need two points to draw a line. But I want more than two points. The more, the better. Why? Because there's one term called the market has memories yeah the market has memories for example i go back to the example uh whereby uh once upon a time chakwetel three dollars right everybody roughly know three dollars is an okay price so everybody people are willing to buy three dollars so if this is a chakwetel chart uh, you will see that the market comes down to three dollars and it will be supported at three 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 yeah go up to four dollars right a it you'll find resistance because very few people are willing to pay beyond four dollars so the market we have memories, yeah? So the more points it is tested, the firmer that line is. Mm. So therefore, we have support, maintaining as support, resistance, maintaining as resistance. But there is another uh, way to establish line. That is when support becomes resistance, all resistance become support. So therefore, go back to the story, okay? Now, once upon a time, $3 is very fair, cheap, all right? $4 expensive. So I wouldn't want to buy $4. Yeah? If I give it a chance, I would sell. Now, however, today with inflation, we suddenly realize that we cannot buy at $3 anymore. When you go around, uh, the price is either 4 5 6 So after a while, you remember that 4 very well. Because once upon a time, I don't want to buy $4. It's supposed to be high, correct? But today, suddenly, uh, I realize that the previous expensive $4, today becomes the support. So that is what I mean by resistance becoming support and support becoming resistance. Yeah? Now, I stick on to the Chakotel story to give you the analogy. right? Otherwise, the, the, uh, another way is to explain how a uh, support can become resistance because when people buy a stock at $5, for example, a lot of people bought at $5 and the market crashed. Right? It went down. Now, a lot of stock players, they do not do this thing called cut loss. So they will hold. They will hold the $5 until if the market managed to come back at $5, they are so happy and they want to sell it away at $5. So therefore, previous support now become resistance. All right? Okay. Now, how do I draw my lines? I would like to share with you the way I draw. I know that there are a lot of people would use the highest point and the lowest point to draw. I do not. By definition, uh, level tested twice cannot be the highest point and cannot be the lowest point. Yeah? In fact, I use closing price instead of high-low. So at the top part, I will look for the highest closing price that is tested at least twice. At the bottom part, I will look for the lowest closing price that is tested, tested at least twice. So if you can see uh, over here, the market close here, all right? Close here. And then I have the low closing price that is being tested. When you look at all the shadows, uh, it's being tested. So I have this as my sideway range. And over here, if I choose this highest closing, this is not being tested two times, but this highest closing price is being tested over here. All right, so you can understand my definition of how, how I use the highest closing tested at least twice, lowest closing tested at least twice to draw my line. So this line after drawing, the market pierced through yeah, and dropped during the COVID. It recovered and go back inside. So the support did not become resistance. In fact, the support reinstated as support. Yeah, Chakotel three dollars. People buy three dollars, buy three dollars, buy three dollars. COVID it plunged, and then after that, people continue to buy three dollars, buy three dollars, buy three dollars. So I have this line tested, in fact, about six times. This is a significant level because moving forward, if the market were to be bearish, all right, coming down here, it ought to find very strong support because it has been supported for so many times. Yeah. So take note of this level for the macro picture for the STI. As for the top, right, you can see how it is also being resisted here, close above, all right, but being uh, pushed in, try to close above, push back in. So we are very much same as the, the, the sideways range defined in 2019. Okay. So therefore, 
this would be using SR line, yeah? All right, so how do I put on a trade? Now, we have done, uh, we have done direction. I have given you uh, a down theory, all right? And I've given you a uh, moving average to help establish direction. So you have at least two kind of tools to help establish direction. And moving average itself is a level whereby you can use it as a support or resistance, but it is moving. And then I teach you how to identify a uh, static level, yeah, horizontal level that is either supported all the way, resisted all the way, or support become resisted and vice versa. Now the next question, how do I put on a trade, right? How do I enter a trade? And that is the third component that I call price action. So essentially, uh, there's this three foundation block called DLP. They all serve different purposes. Put together, it can facilitate you uh, with some action plan, right? Or trade plan. Now, price action, that is when I will start to talk a little bit more about uh, the chart itself. As you can see, uh, whether you already know, these are called candlesticks, all right? Candlesticks, yeah? But during my era, long time ago, in the late 80s, early 90s, that is when we, uh, it's more common for us to use bar chart, okay, bar chart. And floor traders, we hand plot something called point and figure. So actually, there are a lot of ways to represent the data, not limiting to just one or two. There are so many. And in the later, uh, nowadays, over the last 10 to 20 years, perhaps, the most commonly used uh, uh, charting would be candlestick, all right? I don't know how long this will stay until a new method replaces this. But otherwise, if you want to find out more, uh, this is actually not from the West. Uh, it starts from Japan about 400 years ago from some rice farmer, okay? Now, I won't talk too much about the history. Let me just simply explain to you the, the, the price section and how we can benefit using candlesticks for tonight's uh, uh, basic presentation. All right, before we talk about candlestick, I need to first of all explain a little bit using bar chart. Bar chart and using the four elements of open, high, low, close, yeah? Okay, now assuming that this is a daily bar, a daily bar, the opening, meaning that the first traded price of the day would be a dash on the left side. And once the market open there, that dash, that dash is fixed. It will not move, yeah? It only represents the opening. And then the market would form the vertical line. And the buyers will push it up, the sellers will push it down, yeah? So it would keep forming. If it's very narrow, this would be very short. If it's very wide, this would be longer. So this high and low would form the trading range for the day. And while the market is actually trading, you will see another dash on the right side that keeps jumping. That reflects the latest traded price, right? It will jump and jump and jump until finally when it stops jumping, that is when the market closed. So we either call it the closing price or otherwise we call it the settlement price. So you have these four elements of open, high, low, close to represent a bar chart. Yeah, a bar chart. Huh? Now, so that much being understood. The next thing is a, a, a terminology to explain to you the meaning of an up bar. Reference to an opening if the market were to then jump and close higher, so a low opening followed by a higher closing price, that has to be demand forces in control and is a bullish price bar. All right. Now, this definition is quite easy to understand. You have you need to have demand forces, people willing to push up for the price to close higher. So this is called an up bar. Remember this term, up bar. Whereas if the opening price is relatively higher, and price is being driven down, yeah, such that you have a lower closing price, that 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 suggests supply forces are, are in control and is a bearish price bar. So I repeat, open, close, higher is up bar. Open, close, lower would be down bar, okay? Now, so with this definition and understanding of bar chart, up bar, down bar, let's talk about a candlestick construction. A candlestick is constructed simply by boxing up the opening and the closing price. Open and closing, you make it a box. Yeah, make it a box. And therefore, we would simply call this the candle body, the body of the candle. And the top and bottom, some books call it the candle wick. But otherwise, usually we will call it the upper shadow and the lower shadow, all right? The candle body and upper shadow, lower shadow. Now, so very quickly to compare with you, this is an up bar, open, close higher. And this is a down bar, open, close, lower. So if we were to construct the candle body, we have to box up the high, uh, the open and close, all right? Which will make 
both candle body looks the same. They have the same size when you box up the open and close. But to differentiate between up bar and down bar, an up bar would typically have a hollow or white body. So once you see a candle body that is hollow or white color, it signifies that it opens at the bottom of the body and close at the top of the body, giving you a up bar candle. Whereas if you have a dark or shaded candle body, it suggests that it opens at the top of the body and close at the bottom of the body, giving you a down bar candle, all right? So with the respective upper shadow and lower shadow. Now, so if this definition is okay, you will also know that now to, to, today uh, with technology, people prefer to use color. So therefore, most people would choose green or blue color to represent up bar, all right? And you use red color to represent down bar, which is quite logical because red is the color of blood. So therefore, when you see the market showing red color, it reflects that it is bleeding, all right? It is bleeding now. So again, it's quite, it's quite logical to identify that when you see red color, well, it is not that good. The market generally uh, has tendency to come off and going up with green or blue. Now, that being said, uh, uh, newbies, I do remember 10 years ago, one student came to me and he took a chart and showed me. He said, teacher, uh, you tell me uh, the market is bleeding, you know. Yesterday, I keep selling, selling, selling until I die, I lose a lot of money. The biggest market keep going up. So I say, why, why did that happen? So he showed me a chart, all right? He's, trying, he, he's from Hong Kong. He's trying to trade their Hong Kong shares, yeah? Now, so please remember, all these colors are definable. In Asia market like Hong Kong, Taiwan, and China, where red color represents, uh, is a prosperity color. So they choose red color to represent up bar and other colors to represent down bar. Yeah, so therefore you will see the Chinese market in their country, it will go up in red. So do take note, okay? This one, don't need teacher to tell you. Lah, huh? When you look at the market, it doesn't look right. Huh? You, you ought to know it yourself. Lah. All right, so therefore, this is the chart, of the, the same STI chart showing candlesticks yeah, up and down. Okay, for today's very simple uh, one and a half hours doing the basic whereby I need to share with you so many things, I would just uh, leave it to now explaining to you some candle signals. Yeah, Now, what I share with you today uh, is really a very, very simple basic 101. Uh, it will be enough for you to start. It will also be good enough for you to uh, start to understand the market and maybe make a little bit of money if you are lucky enough. But the learning does not stop here. Uh. All right. So therefore, I want to show you just now we talk about direction, we talk about levels. If the market were to reach resistance level, all right, we want to focus on putting on a short trade yeah, or to sell the market. Now, if you want to combine it with price action, we would like the price action to suggest to us that the big boys are also trying to sell at the level before we take action. Now, this would be the three basic sets of candlesticks uh, that, that, that I learned uh, when I was new. Also, uh, I have a sniper trader, a colleague, who is a super, super five-star trader. Today, uh, her candlestick knowledge uh, is Lu Huo Chun Qing. Uh, so good such that she can say next candle would surely be up or down. Uh, this is not science already. Uh, this is very art. Uh, not many people can reach that stage, right? But anyway, before she reached that stage, as a newbie, she also learned these three basic sets. Yeah? So let's all go back to beginner's baby step. We learned this signal called a shooting star inside bar bearish engulfing versus the three buy signals of hammer, IB, and bullish engulfing, all right? So let's take a look at one by one. Huh? First of all, look at shooting star. Now, a resistance area whereby if you have this as an SR line, a potential resistance zone, whereby the Chakwitel is at $6, all right? So you know that if the market reached there, there is likely from market memory that there are a lot of selling there. So your trade plan, yeah. Now I remember uh, during the 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 uh, some of the QA session, uh, your game, your your game, right? This game, uh, you're supposed to submit trade plan. Uh, uh, I'm not telling you to do what I tell you to do, but this can be a reference for you. So for example, your trade plan could be all right, market is now on the way up, right? I'm going to wait at Chakwetel six dollar, which means that resistance zone, and if it is being confirmed by price action, yeah, then I will put on a short trade. So the market actually continued to move, right, at magnet to that level. Now, at the end of the day, it reached that level, yeah, but before the day closed, what happened is there's a rejection and the candle stopped like that. I rewind and show you, uh, I rewind and show you. 
All right. So we see the market going up, assuming this is the daily candle. Uh, it ended open, close, open and close. And on this day, it traded to the resistance level, traded to the highest point, and then got rejected until it ended with an upper shadow, with a small body. Now, this satisfies the definition of a shooting star. All right. A shooting star would be a sell signal that has a relatively longer upper shadow compared to a relatively smaller body. You may have or may not have lower shadow. So that would be a shooting star, all right, for you to put on a short trade. Okay, so you understand what a shooting star look like? Let, let's now look at the mirror image that is called a hammer. This is just a mirror image. So if, let's say, the market would do come off, yeah? All right, your plan is, okay, I'm going to wait at Cha Kui Tiao, four dollars yeah to to look for price action to confirm that i want to buy so same thing the market while coming down we do nothing because our plan is to wait for buy or long at the support level now on that day finally the market come and reach the support level all right and before it closed it got rejected with a long shadow below with a relatively smaller body and we have a hammer which is a buy signal at a support level, yeah? Now, this example of how we will then put on a long trade or a short trade, respectively, at the support and resistance zone. Okay, then we're going to learn the remaining two signals. This is called inside bar. So, we look at a bearish inside bar and a bullish inside bar, right? First of all, same thing. Uh, inside bar, simply, when you want to plan to sell at the resistance, the market might reach there and give you a shooting star. But it might not give you a shooting star because if you were to close, right? Wow, rather bullish. It tested the resistance and it closed there. But the next day, it gives you a down bar. And this down bar is inside the previous day's up bar. Yeah, so the criteria got to be an up bar, become a down bar. And the down bar is inside, all right? The range of yesterday's up bar. So that's why it's called inside bar. And this is a bearish inside bar, which is equivalent to a sell signal, all right? So... On the other hand, when the market is coming, approaching support level, whereby you want price action to confirm going in a long position, yeah? If the market reach there and close, all right? Close with a down bar. If the next day we encounter a up bar, yeah? That is within the range of the previous day's range. So it is inside the previous day's range. Therefore, it's called a bullish inside bar, all right? So that would be, again, another signal that you can identify a uh, sell signal, bearish IB versus a bullish IB at the resistance and, and support uh, zone, respectively. Finally, this is called a BE. stands for a bearish engulfing versus a bullish engulfing below. Again, to show you with the, uh, 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 the price action, going, approaching the uh, resistance zone, yeah, if the market sometimes like nye, nye, want to go there, but getting smaller and smaller. So finally, it reached there, all right? It touches the resistance line. And then, the next day, it take higher, but turn around and close lower. That is where you get the name bearish engulfing. Yeah, because this candle engulfed the previous candle, high and low. So this is called a bearish engulfing. And versus when you're trying to wait at the support zone, all right? Now, you might see a hammer, you might see a bullish IB, or you might see the market coming down and close like this. The next day, it actually traded lower, but end up closing higher. So you have a bar, an up bar, engulfing the previous down bar, and therefore this is called a bullish engulfing. Now, so very quickly, I have from explaining price action to you, how, uh, uh, what is open hello close, defined into up bar, down bar, and candle construction, yeah? Now, among all the other uh, additional things that you can learn about candlesticks, we just talk about using it as price action for uh, entry, all right? For entry, for long entry at the support area or for short entry at the resistance area. So with that, let's take a look again uh, at our market. Now, you are familiar with this already, right? Just now we have this level. So actually, uh, the market went sideways, sideways, sideways and plunged. And then after that, it goes back up into this sideways zone. So we already have uh, existing two, two, two sets. There are two or rather two, one pair. One pair of SR lines waiting for us for price action. So when the market actually comes down to test, test and test, right? We'll take a closer look at what happened here. What happened here? Huh? So at this level, you see the market go up, come back down come back down and test the level with a down bar and an up bar. So I hope you can recognize uh, 
this is called an inside bar. It's a bullish inside bar to suggest that price action is happening at the support zone. All right, the market come again and test. Yeah, now, uh, you, there, there are a lot of signals, right? So slowly, you might want to learn more along the way when you can cope. This is a signal that I have not taught you. Yeah, but nevertheless, there is another one that the market traded down. The tip touches it and go up again, ending with a hammer. So you have the market going and tested, tested, tested. It's almost like Chakwetel $3, right? Market coming down, you have people buying, you have people buying, you have people buying. Eventually, the STI decide to rotate to a higher level to test the resistance over there. Yeah. So this is an example of how at the buy level and sell level, we use price action to confirm our decision, all right, of entry exit. Okay, so I would leave it to you, uh, yeah, a bit of homework for you to go closer in to look at what happened over there when the market actually traded up to test the resistance, all right? A bit closer, uh, you will see something similar uh, with a long tail, with a long tail on top, okay, on top uh, before it got rejected back down again. All right, so with that, um, I have now finished uh, talking about the fundamentals of uh, um, uh, these few things on DLP. Uh, so let's learn how to put it together, right? Putting together to take a look at the macro picture. So I'm going to actually help you go through the SOP uh, because I also realize that some of you claim that you are totally new. Uh, so I don't know the procedure, right? What is some of the checklist or whatever. Now, this is by no means the only way, but by sharing with you this simple guideline, Let's see how we can put together into a rather structured approach uh, for you to at least uh, use this as your uh, beginner learning SOP, all right? Okay, whatever you wish to do, first of all, take a look at the macro picture. So best is to look at the index of the country, yeah? I understand that for this game, you will be playing either Singapore stocks or US stocks. Uh, I forgot to ask the, 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 the organizer uh, whether you can actually do ETF or not. Because if you can do ETF, right, then you are also able to uh, trade directly the index itself uh, rather than selecting the, the individual stocks. So therefore, uh, well, whether you can or cannot do the stock, you start with the macro picture. So for Singapore, you look at the STI, all right? So once you call up the blank chart, try to call up a weekly chart you can compress a little bit more data and use the left to determine the right, yeah? Now, I will guide you with the SOP for what I've shared with you over the last one hour. You start by glancing to see, use Dow theory to see whether the market is doing lower high, higher low, uh, higher high, higher low, lower high, lower low, or doing sideways, all right? Now, we have gone through this chart multiple times, so you can see already it is doing a sideway. Then you do lower high, lower low into a crash, and then it start to give you higher low, higher high, back into a sideway range over here, yeah? Now, so after you have establishing using Dow theory, the potential trend that we are in, use your SR line. Use the guideline level tested at least twice. Find a consistent area whereby there are buyers, yeah, multiple level, multiple supported level, or multiple resisted level, or resistance become support, a support become resistance. Okay, so the same two lines because it has been supported here and is confirmed supporting here, resisted here, and also got rejected here. So we are still in this sideways range. All right, after you have done this from weekly chart, change it into daily chart. That is when you will see more candles, yeah? Now, the purpose, which is better, remember, remember, fast and slow, all right? For something is faster, then it is more noise, yeah? Something that is slower, more stable, but is slower. So therefore, if I establish the levels from a weekly chart, a weekly chart is more steady. So those levels are more uh, trustworthy, right? But to wait for a weekly chart to form, uh, although it's more steady, but it will be slower. So if I establish the level and I go on to a daily chart, one week, right? One week, uh, I have five candles to play with. For example, if the market were to form a weekly hammer, I have to wait five days for that hammer to form before I get a signal. If I want to get a bullish IB on a weekly chart, I need 10 days, right? One week down, one week up to give me a bullish IB. But during these five days or 10 days, 
the daily chart, I will have five candles or 10 candles showing me more minute final price movement. Uh, that I can potentially enter faster, perhaps at a better price. Yeah, but again, of course, uh, I can get whipsaw with a smaller time frame, uh, 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 candle as well. All right. So once this is done, then I thought you moving average, right? You plant in the two hundred EMA on a daily chart, only on daily. Uh, I do not plant in the two hundred EMA on any other time frame, because on the daily chart, two hundred EMA is the best indication of the fund's fair value. Now, so with this, eh, everything again very confluence. You see that it's trapped within the sideway range doing you know, you know, you know, you know, before it plunge, right? So you see technical analysis, why I talk about timing. Finally, when the market closed below this and it stay below, keyword, keyword, right? It stay discount to the average, it stay below the support level. You have ample time to act before it starts to take on momentum. All right, so therefore, after that, it cannot touch this, yeah, and then the momentum when it goes into premium, it continues to go above now, supported, supported, and during this kind of moment is where you have two stars or even three stars aligned, whereby the market come down to test the support zone. It is also supported by the funds fair value, all right, so therefore, ample time for you to buy before the market actually move up for you to take profit, yeah. All right, and then the, finally, the market go on to trap within the sideways range and start to go above, below, above, below, moving average again. I remember, I remember, in the beginning of the year, I was telling my trading community, I was, uh, uh, because my, my I, I helped SGX promote Simski, which is our local market, uh, uh, trading the local market index. Other than STI, we have another product called the Simski, right? So I told them the STI, uh, uh, starting of the year, I made a judgment call when the rest of the market start to become bearish starting of this year. Yeah, When STI, instead of going down, it goes up there. I said that I have a judgment call that STI this year would likely be similar to 2019. We are going to do an E or E or E or E or E or. Now, my reason of saying that is because um, our market seems very retarded. People are not quite interested in uh, other area other than technology stock, right? We don't have tech. We don't have tech. Now, I'm not sure, I, I, I wouldn't say it will not happen, whether the banks are able to bring the STI to new height. Yeah? So far, there's no evidence of it happening yet. So therefore, if the rest of the market are actually coming down this year, I do not see how we can go up ourselves. So that is the reason why we, I am not bullish about our market. Yeah. At the same time, we have we have not been bought up. So therefore, if we have we, we are not being bought up a lot, we will also not be dumped a lot. So for this reason, I'm also not too bearish about our market. And therefore, my judgment call would be we are likely continue to go in this sideways range unless market is being uh, gripped by sudden uh, uh, greed or fear momentum over the last quarter. All right. That being said, I won't know. Uh, by saying this, uh, I'm not telling. I I'm not trying to predict for you. Uh, a lot of times we will make some judgment call, but we will always use the price action to confirm our trade plan. Okay. Now, so this is what happened. And then if you can cope, plant in the individual's fair value. All right. My, 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 my I call it map, my map. Yeah. To, to decide on whether a eh, there's momentum up. Yeah. Momentum up when it goes up, momentum down reference to the individual fair value. Okay. Now, so this is a very simple SOP that you can do and you zoom into that portion to make your trade plan. All right. So you can decide either I wait for market to reach support zone to look for buy signal or resistance zone to look for sell signal or at the fair value itself. Yeah. Whether I'm bullish enough, I will take a buy signal over here or if I'm bearish enough, feeling that the fair value is resisted, I will take the short signal here. So basically, entry level would either be at the resistance support or the moving average values using price action. Okay, so um, now from the big picture, uh, let me help you go down to individual stock. Uh, I, in my preparation, uh, I do have too much time to talk about too many things. So if let's say DBS, uh, DBS, many people are, are interested uh, and with vested interest, interest as well. So therefore, uh, after looking at the macro picture, all right, you will go into your individual stock to look at the chart. Same procedure. Plunder weekly chart, yeah, and try to squeeze and go as far back as you need 
to see if you can see anything. First of all, based on Dow theory, remember whether it's doing higher, high, higher, low, lower, higher, low, low, or is it doing a sideways? All right. Now, so you can see that the DBS did a higher, high, higher, low, and then turn into a lower, high, lower, low. All right. After that, go into a sideways before the COVID plunge. Yeah. After that, recovered and doing higher low and break higher high, continue to do higher high, higher low all the way until here reverses to lower high, lower low. So after we have established this, yeah? Now, of course, next thing is important to plan in the SR levels. So glance, all right? Do not, do not need to, uh, okay, the, 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 the clue is, uh, do not need to plan in so many lines on your chart until you confuse yourself. Uh, where the market is, where the price is, I just need a couple of lines that is close to the current market price. If you can tell me, okay, if I plant a support here, right, this is too far away, uh, uh, I probably wouldn't need that line, yeah, until if the market really crashed to that particular point. So where are the lines that would uh, catch my interest that I can potentially take action that is close to the market here? Yeah, that is the key. So I give you about five seconds. You want to glance and take a look following the level tested at least twice, all right? Any support that remains supported that you can draw a line, any resistance that remain resisted that you can draw a line, or otherwise support become resistance or resistance become support. For the DBS weekly chart, I have one line. And I think this is the one most important line, all right? Five seconds is up and this is my line okay now if i spend all the way back this is when dbs reaches a high here yeah and did a level tested twice remember i will choose the highest closing price so now you understand candle is a green bar up at the highest point of the body that is the closing a red candle down uh the lowest part of the red candle body is the closing all right so to draw a up line, I would look for green candle. Green candle, this point is only once. This point is being tested one more time. So therefore, I would use this closing to draw a horizontal line. All right. After the crash, yeah, the market moved its way up and got magneted back to test this. After that, it went above and stayed above supported. Supported, supported, all right, and went up. And the recent crash in June came back down and found support over here. If you can zoom in and take a look, right over here, very quickly, I can see a bullish inside bar on a weekly chart. Yeah, on a weekly chart. Okay, so that price is in the region of around $29.60, there about now. So when I have established from a weekly chart the trend and the uh, uh, SR line, same thing. The next stage is what? Go down to daily chart. So I will have more price action, yeah, to tell me what to do, right? To give me faster action. Uh, I can even enter at a, 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 a lower price. But of course, again, beware of whipsaw because uh, it's trade-off, huh? Faster, more noise, slower, more stability. Now, so that would be that one line that I draw on a daily chart. What do you need to do next? Plant in the 200 EMA, all right? So you can see that the 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 DBS uh, actually mirrors the STI quite a bit, not surprisingly, because the STI heavily is made up of the three banks and Singtel. They made up about 50% of the STI. So therefore, the banks and STIs uh, and, and, and Singtel's movement would basically form the movement of STI, all right? The three banks and Singtel's movement, yeah. So therefore, you can see that DBS also went into a sideways range in 2019, you know, you know, you know, before plunging in the COVID, yeah. Same thing, unlike STI that cannot touch the 200, DBS actually snapped back, okay, but got rejected. And then together with uh, STI, after resisting here again, uh, after the Biden's election in November, collectively, the whole world went into a bullish market, all right, and confirmed with the technical, yeah, with the chart. So after that, you see all the funds, all the houses come in, they're willing to pay premium, yeah. It's above fair value, it's expensive, but they're willing to buy. And they bought this, giving it a higher high, higher low, all the way, and resurface back above this, supported until the uh, crash in the beginning of the year, all right. Followed by 
there's another characteristic uh, for our local market. Uh, this actually reflects very amateurish kind of thinking. Uh, uh, whether you all know or not, okay, I don't know how experienced you are. Our local markets uh, is very funny. Every time there is dividend, uh, that stock would be, uh, people will show interest. But once it goes XD, yeah, that would be, there would be dumping. There will be lack of interest. All right, those who don't know what is uh, CD and XD, uh, that one, I'll leave it to you to find out yourself. Otherwise, you can ask the organizer on separate occasion. All right. Now, so therefore, uh, this is what happened after XD, yeah, that, that, that DBS actually dropped. But you will realize that DBS is still quite well supported above the fund's fair value. Despite the current weakness in the general market, it is actually rather well supported, right? Plant in my pair of value. So now, DBS, we have a support with both moving averages. If really cannot support, then okay, this is still a better place to go in, all right? But otherwise, if you can find support here, then perhaps, yeah, uh, if sentiment in the world can improve a little bit, it will give it the excuse to go higher from here using the fair value level to act as support. All right, so... Uh, I hope having repeated this, uh, you are now familiar with the SOP I've given you applying this thing to the macro picture on the index down to selecting a particular stock that belongs to the country. Okay, so therefore, now with this, yeah, you zoom into this area is what you need to do your planning. Do you want to plan by looking for buy at the moving average or at the support level? Now, if someone to ask me, uh, Tom, how do you have a resistance line? Uh, it's deliberate, lah, huh? you go and draw yourself. Lah. Uh, I don't want to supply you everything, given you the formula, the SOP, everything, you go and practice yourself, okay? All right, so next thing. I want to, at this point in time, uh, take a small breather from talking about the technical things to go back to share with you uh, the importance of learning TA. Just now, I've already given you the reason, yeah? Now, I bring myself back again to when I was very new. I read, new. I read a lot of books. One of the books impacted me a lot, a lot, a lot. This book called The Disciplined Trader by Mark Douglas. Uh, unfortunately, the author passed away, I think, uh, two, three years back. All right. Now, this book remains as my trading Bible even until today. Uh, a lot of things I learned from this book, not limiting to trading only, yeah, to also some life philosophy. I'm going to borrow one concept, all right, to explain to you about TA. The book actually mentioned, uh, the mention, what is the marketplace? Yeah, the market is a totally unstructured environment. It's totally chaotic. It's totally random. So is it even possible to make money out of an unstructured, random, disorderly place? The answer is actually obviously no. All right. So therefore, since the market is totally unstructured and random, how can we find consistency in making money? That is when we need to create structure in the unstructured environment. We need to create order within chaos. In other words, we need rules. So TA, as you know now, after giving you the previous example, how I define SR level, how I created fair value, how I look at price action, all these are to create rules. Create rules for what? To guide our action, not to tell the market what to do, all right? So that these rules will tell us, hey, when is there to do something? When is there nothing to do? When you must get in? When you must get out? When you must cut loss? So that is the purpose of TA. So I hope I've given you another good reason yeah, to, uh, to start learning and to continue learning technical analysis. All right, with that, let me now go to the next thing. Again, remembering, uh, I'm trying to tailor this whole session uh, to suit the, the, the theme of uh, this uh, investment game. Uh. Knowing that you can trade Singapore market or US market, so let's do the same thing, all right? By looking at the US market, starting with the macro picture. The US market has got various indices. They have the Dow Jones, S&P, the NASDAQ, the Russell, or whatever, yeah? Now, the tech, the, 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 the sector uh, that run the most after the COVID crash is actually the technology stock. The reason being, some people call it the 5G revolution, right? But otherwise, we all actually experience uh, that technology is actually starting to take over many areas in our life. So therefore, a lot of companies, not limited to cheap making companies, yeah? as long as you utilize technology, you have potential. For example, 
Tesla, right? You're talking about uh, car automation, uh, a vehicle that go into self-drive, and you talk about uh, the, the 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 app, yeah, the the, the Grab app uh, in China, uh, even the food app, all this, right? All this, all these are in strong demand, and therefore people or rather the funds heavily leverage to uh, benefit from the burst of the technology sector, which is represented by Nasdaq. For those people who do not know, yeah, keep remembering that most of you are uh, still students that if you have not touched the market before, in US, uh, they use different indices with different components to represent different sectors. So NASDAQ is the one that represents the technology sector. All right? So you have your Apple, uh, your, your whatever, all this will be in NASDAQ itself. So if you are keen uh, to participate in technology stock, which for the sake of winning the game, all right, I'm not suggesting, but just to give you something to think about, Singapore market, maybe lack of volatility, right? Some of you might actually be thinking, if I want to win the game, I want something more volatile, correct? Now, again, uh, something good that is bad, bad that is good. Uh, if you cannot handle the volatility, trading very volatile stock, your $5,000 uh, can get wiped out very quickly, uh, and then, okay, law, game over, law, right? But if you are good, then with this $5,000 margin, uh, you are able to uh, benefit in the volatility and be able to toy in your school. All right, so same thing. Before you choose any tech stock, let's look at the broad picture, the NASDAQ. Same thing, look at the weekly chart, right? Plan out the weekly chart, and this is what happened to the pre COVID that is still rising. This is the COVID plunge. Yeah? You can see uh, it plunged only for about four weeks, uh, including the top candle, one, two, three, four, five. And you see this. I hope you can recognize this candle signal. All right. I only teach you three kinds of signal, of buy signal. I teach you a hammer. I teach you a bullish inside bar. I teach you a bullish engulfing. All right. So you can see the market coming down, down bar, down bar, down trade lower and close higher, giving you a bullish engulfing and it started to do a V-shaped recovery. Very quickly, it took on the pre-COVID high, all right? And it continued to take a higher, higher, higher low with a bit of rest here, with a bit of rest here, with a bit of rest here until here. When due to the fundamentals, yeah, whereby the stimulus package is being reduced, inflation, and then they want to uh, uh, do a rate hike. And then after that, start of the year, you have the uh, Ukraine crisis, all right, driving up inflation further. And that is when people start to do their unwinding and therefore cause this to go down. You see, uh, I can explain to you with all the fundamentals that are happening. But without explaining the fundamentals, you simply look at the effect that is still doing up higher, high, higher, low, sideways, 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 until the market shows a lower high and a lower low. All right. So the effect will suggest that A, the uptrend is over, right? And now it is likely going into a down rotation. Now, so after looking at this, what is the next thing you do? Look at down theory. And then look at SR line formula. What, li what lines can you plant? What lines can you plant? Remember the mantra, huh? I look at the left to help me with the right. Okay? And I don't want lines that are too far away yeah, from the current price that is no meaning. I want lines that can be near to the current price yeah, so that I can uh, get ready to take action when appropriate. I give you five seconds to look at this to see whether you are seeing the same as I do. Okay? Five seconds. Now, these are the two lines that I have. I'm not drawing in an arbitrary manner, still using the guideline. When the market reaching here, this small little sideways range, uh, allow me to draw a support and a resistance. All right. So the support is the lowest closing that is being tested at least twice. At least twice. Yeah. And then over here, the market is trying to do a sideways again, right? So I find a lowest closing that's also being tested, yeah, multiple times. Now, so therefore, this sideways support, this sideways support over here, the market actually finds support here one more time before April crashing down to the next level. Yeah. Now, so if you have ideas of some more signal, you would be able, even without, without knowing signal, uh -huh, the market is supported by this level and rotated up to meet resistance at this level. So over here, this is an example of support, support, support becoming resistance. Okay. Buy Chao Kui Tiao. Yeah. You buy uh, $3, $3, 
Eh, sorry, wrong example because we're talking about deflation like that. All right. So anyway, people who bought here, bought here, bought here, uh, now suddenly they have a chance, right? They try to get out. So support becomes resistance. Now, so after this is done, I hope you still remember the, 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 the sequence here. Yeah? Go to daily chart. That is where you have more candles to look for faster action. All right, faster action. We are zooming into here. Huh? So therefore, take a look at this, this region now. Plant in your 200 EMA. You can see how wonderful that this market is being played by the big boys. How the big boys pay premium to the tech stock with leverage pushing it all the way to historical high, right? And when the collective unwinding start to happen, when it goes below and doing discount, they are all willing to sell discount, defining a bear market for the tech sector, all right? And then after that, two occasions when they push above, tested, come back down, tested, come back down. This is the area where we have a two-star align, yeah, whereby a resistance SR level is also being resisted by a moving average fair value, okay? If you can cope, plan in my individual fair value and well, we can start to plan trades, push up this part, yeah? So you can see that there would be a, a, a bullish candle forming, bullish candle forming at the support level and uh, whether you can recognize anything over here, all right? Now, if you can recognize those three signals that I teach you, good, but otherwise, you might need to uh, learn some more signals lah, huh? because it's not limited to just uh, the three sets that I've taught you, all right? So this is the current situation of the NASDAQ. So after having this big picture, basically you select whatever component you want, yeah, uh, of, of all the fang stock, lah, huh? all, the, all the meta, lah, Facebook, lah, Google, lah, whatever. So you do the same thing and you see whether... Uh, uh, where are the levels that you wish to participate and you can submit in your trade plan, all right? So that is how you do it. Okay, so with that, uh, I have come to the end of my technical presentation, which is an introduction to basic technical analysis, yeah? Now, do not look down on this basic. Huh? What I've shared with you, right, would be the mindset, would be the philosophy, the, 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 the logic, yeah, behind all these technical indicators. So they are almost like when you learn Kung Fu, yeah, the Qi Ben Kong is very important. When you have this foundation firmly built, it will facilitate you uh, a very good foundation to how additional indicators. If not, at one point in time, you're going to get uh, totally confused with too many things, okay? Now, so with that, actually, uh, I did a quick revision after I tried to revise my presentation to suit this particular event of Youth Investment Challenge. I realized that I have promised organizer uh, to actually deliver these few things. So I've done down theory, moving average, support resistance, candlestick formation, but realized that I did not touch chart pattern, okay? Now, the reason is because in my own course, itself uh, in the basic module i don't have chart pattern because to me i feel that chart pattern belongs to uh, a bit more advanced topic right whereby i need my foundation to talk about where to look for chart pattern anyhow we actually discussed with the organizer before my presentation there are there are a few slides that they actually want to show you uh, very quickly i'll bring them up uh. this is a slide provided by the organizer that want to suggest about identifying support resistance. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the line has been drawn for you. So you can see that the reason for drawing this line is actually resistance that has become support, that has become support. So you have san tian, yi xian, right? Three points to connect a line. Of course, uh, the way to connect the line, some people choose high, low, but I have already shared with you, I will choose the highest closing or the lowest closing, depending on whether I'm finding support or resistance. Yeah, that is that is the way I do it. Lah. There is no right, wrong way. There's no best way. The way that you do consistently that you like would be your best way. All right. So the next example that uh that, that we are showing is the market actually cannot go up here. So by definition, it is resistance, right? I have this line here. So it all depends on whether this line comes from the left. If there's a previous resistance, uh, then it makes all sense that the market is ha having the memory and reacting to this resistance. But if this line does not come from the left, then the market is starting to create a new memory here by creating a new resistance zone over here, all right? So another one. This one, uh, to me, uh, at one glance, right, I don't look at this line. I'm basically looking at Dow theory, lower high, lower low. Can you see? Can you see that the market do, is doing a step down kind of a movement, a step down kind of trend? It came down, but Pop, 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 pop. Try to support, yeah, for a period. I yeah, cannot give way. Do 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 boom. All right, then pop, 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 
same thing. Uh, try to support for a period, cannot give way, right? Pop, pop, try, pop. So actually, it's doing a very orderly lower high, lower low with SRI support that is broken, SRI support that is broken, SRI support that is broken, in fact, doing a descending triangle, all right? Sorry to introduce the new term descending triangle because that is, is, is like very obvious to me. That one, again, I'll leave it to your own research to find out what is ascending, descending triangle. All right, finally, this is an example of a pattern that perhaps the organizer is trying to ask me to show. Now, very quickly, uh, then, right, there are two kinds of application. Number one, uh, the itself is a reversal. So if the market travels to a very high point or very low point, usually it would give you a pattern before it reverses, right? So that is one application of pattern. Now, as I say, the term pattern, right, already sound a little bit more subjective, yeah? If a beginner were to learn pattern, uh, I can you uh, people would, wow, anyhow, tweet pattern, yeah? You everywhere also pattern, 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 then it, it would defeat the 101 purpose of pattern. So therefore, again, uh, I would rather choose to uh, uh, drop this topic, all right? Organizer, I hope you don't mind. Uh, but anyway, those of you who are keen to do this, uh, you can uh, uh, follow up with Fokwan. He would reference you uh, or, 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 or he will be telling you about pattern or where you can find out more about this. Okay, finally, finally, let me round this up by telling you the two important golden rules and a couple of summary slides, okay? So, as a floor trader, when I was new in the floor, yeah, the seniors, when their boot is good enough, they would share something with the newbies. And after listening to all of their sharing, right, I confirmed that there's these two important golden rules after which I share with newbies, yeah, all the way until today, I've been doing uh, training, I'll share with everybody, including in my course, as well as in public seminar. There are two golden rules. I don't call them golden rules for nothing. Uh. That means they're not to be violated. Uh. They're especially related to trading. Number one, you already know, identify trend, correct? I put it in so many ways that this is a number game. You can only make money if you are in the correct rhythm as the number. Otherwise, you lose money. However much you argue, bore you, Okay, uh, uh, doesn't matter, right? Uh, so if you're in rhythm, you will make money. If you're off rhythm, you would lose money. So therefore, go to rule number one, identify trend. Do remember that it's a probability game. Every single trade has got a random outcome. Yeah. Therefore, with margin leverage trading, it is so important to have this golden rule number two, which means that if wrong, cut. You must cut. Now, Investors uh, don't have this in their vocabulary. Uh. I know investors who tell me, hey, I do dollar cost averaging. Like, come down, buy law, buy law, buy law. Wait for the market to recover. Yo, si tell how han. Okay? Now, I, I'm not saying that it is wrong. Some people do very well using dollar cost averaging as a strategy, as a investment strategy. But averaging a losing trade is not acceptable in margin and leverage trading. So therefore, remember, as long as you are dealing with margin leverage, wrong must cut. Now, if you ask me how to cut, I have already taught you. So basically, the three sell signals. If I sell at a resistance zone, yeah, with this sell signal, if after putting on a short trade, if the market were to trade higher than the signal, that is when I'm wrong and I would cut. So by doing so, my entry and exit would be very precise and I can establish and determine risk beforehand. Yeah, it's very well determined. All right, same thing if I were to buy any of this signal, if the market were to trade lower than the low, that is where I would cut. So that is how you would cut your uh, 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 losing position. All right, now, do you realize that I have actually not talked about exit plan? Uh, it is deliberate uh, because it's easier to talk about entry, exit, uh, 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 entry and everything else. But exit plan, right, is actually tied to the money management portion, which I believe there's a separate session by another trainer explaining money, manage, money management to you. Yeah. So very briefly, exit plan, after you enter, people would take the risk involved, right, to multiply uh, and give you an exit, exit ratio. Yeah. So whether you want a 1.5R, 2R, 3R or whatever. So the exit plan very often is a relation with the risk you are, you are involved. Or otherwise, I'm going to hold until it reaches certain target level, okay? So all those will be the various exit plan depending on your trade plan. All right, finally, as you can see, I 
quoted this yeah, as a start. Everything has good and bad. So I've also said this, right? What are good and bad, fast and slow, investing or trading, uh, not, not as to which is better or worse. It, 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 there are good, there are relatively good things about it and think about it. That is what you need to do and, and, and balance it. And Ms. Carol Fong said again, invest in yourself. Now, that is what I want to highlight this point because it is so important. Because investment, you know this term already. Uh, it is not short term. Uh, it is long term. Uh. Therefore, invest in yourself also means that you have to continue this learning journey. Learning is a journey, not a destination. Learning never ends. And I also heard some questions that some of the students, you feel a bit intimidated. I'm new. I'm new. Right? Every master was once a beginner. You cannot from, oh, I suddenly become, I know, all right? You just have to take this one step and persevere and continue until you leave the beginner's phase and you still continue learning, all right? So my final slide in my in this presentation stack is quoting Sun Tzu. Because trading is as dangerous as fighting war. Because if you are wrong, you can die and you can literally die. So therefore, among all the Sun Tzu quote, yeah, this one, everybody heard of before. Know thyself, know thy enemy, a thousand battles, a thousand victories, right? In Chinese, zhi qi zhi bi, bai zhan, bai shen. So therefore, many people, while they are trying to uh, find out about technical, find out about fundamentals, learn everything else, one thing most people forget to learn, you have to find out about yourself okay because you are going to be a very important element and you are the weakest link in your success formula okay ultimately so uh i hope how you're going to do it uh so finally let me just answer one question during the, the networking session on Sunday, some people ask me, Tom, how to connect to you? Uh? What course do you do? Uh? Uh, I'm non-connectable. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm still a very Lao Kutong era. Uh, but anyway, I train for SGX. I am not a private uh, course provider, so I'm not aggressive in providing course. I freelance for SGX 10 years ago when asked me to do so for fun. Uh, but after that, it become like more than 10 years and it's getting serious. Uh. So, so therefore, I do a program I specialize in futures trading. So I train people to do futures, all right? And then my program is called Professional Equities Index and Single Stock Futures is IBF funded. Unfortunately, I have started my last program for the year, last Saturday, day two, coming Saturday. After that, followed by a one-month hand-holding period. After that, my next course is likely next year, yeah? So therefore, if you wish to uh, uh, find out what I'm doing, go to the SGX Academy website, and look for this particular program next year, okay? So without talking too much about causes, I think that is uh, all I have. I believe my timing is just about right. Yeah, 8.30, thank you very much. So I wish you guys all the best in your game and in your future endeavor, okay? In terms of financial literacy as well as uh, everything else. All right, oh, thank you okay. for going. I pass back to you. you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, everyone, for staying tuned till this hour. But I'm afraid to tell you guys that uh, we might have to extend this uh, webinar a little bit just to get through some of the questions. So, Tom, I'll, I'll just select some of the questions here and then we'll, we'll answer them. Yeah. Uh, okay. One of the questions come up by one of our people in the uh, webinar is that um, they asked, what is the suggested time frame you look at when you employ your TA? Uh, okay, my answer might not be relevant to you. Uh. Just now, I have already given you uh, from, a, from a weekly down to daily, right? Because I also remember either in the Q&A session on Monday or, or was it on, on Sunday, that for this game, uh, I think uh, the organizer advised you to look at daily chart and, and do position using uh, daily candle close. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Fogwan. But for those people who are good enough to do intraday, then you can uh, do your own intraday time frame. Now, otherwise, uh, I'm a professional trader. Uh, I use various time frames for various reasons. I teach my student a very general, acceptable, good time frame that is not too fast and not too slow will be a one-hour chart. All right? So I hope that answers you. But that is for my, my, my trading uh, capacity. Uh. As for you as a newbie, for the sake of this game and for learning, I think uh, take it slow. Take it, take it. Look, look at daily candles. Okay, Tom, thank you. And next, uh, very quickly, how to use price action and market debt to trade? 
Uh, you are asking a uh, wrong person at the wrong timing. Market depth, uh, all right. I uh, you talk about level two or whatever. Uh. Now, I don't use market depth because I don't feel that I have an edge. People who tell you there's an edge, uh, then you learn from them. So, so, so I'm a wrong person. Uh, I heard a lot of stockbroker telling you market depth, all right, because a lot of stock orders are placed by institution. If you can see market depth, you can see their position, but. These orders can fool you, especially in trading. They would be putting an uh, order there, and when the market is reaching, they would pull out, all right? Plus, a lot of arbitrages putting in the market depth to do arbitraging. So, they are not reliable the way you look at stocks doing market depth. So, therefore, that would be my answer. Uh, and and I, 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 I don't have a method to teach you market depth for the electronic trading today. Yes, yes. And also to answer this person's question, right, uh, the nature of this uh, contest, because it is, again, a demo account and the information is delayed, they will be aware on delayed data for the because it's a demo, right? So looking at market debt is quite pointless uh, in that sense because it's late already. And also market debt is really advanced uh, uh, concept. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about this when we get there eventually. Uh, next. Will trend line be better to show short term? Uh, will trend line be better to show shorter term trend? Um, trend line is an extension of SR line. Just now I taught you guys SR line, right? The rules I do san tian yi xian. Ah, if if I don't do horizontal and I connect a slanting tian, that becomes a trend line. So actually, uh, yes. So, in another words, trend line is an advanced topic of horizontal SR line. Mm. But for you to say that, oh, isn't it better, whatever, remember, uh, everything got better, got worse, right? So, there's no such thing as better. But a trend line would guide you that the trend is intact until that trend is violated. So, that is about what I can answer this question. Okay, Tom. Uh, the other question I will I will, I will answer, and then you just uh, Tom, you just fill me in if 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 you have another view on it. Uh. the question is when there's high demand, the stock price will increase? Question mark. Well, to answer that question, uh, nothing in the stock market or any technical analysis uh, is ever an absolute will uh, happen. It most likely when there's high demand, yes, most likely the stock price most likely would go up. But again, there is that slim chance. Just like I give you the analogy that if, if there's dark clouds, will, will it rain? Most likely it will rain. 100% will it rain? Who knows, right? So uh, it also depends on a few factors such as uh, volume. If, if volume is, is missing, if volume is thin and there's high demand, yes, stock price, most likely more than 90% will go up. But if there's heavy volume, if there's heavy resistance, if there's a lot of people queuing to sell, regardless of high demand, Stock price will probably stay the same. Okay, should I buy shares when there is a crash? Uh, if you are investing, if you believe in the fundamentals of the company, if you're looking at really long term, then the short, the really short answer to that is yes. Lah. But for the nature of this exercise, because it is eight weeks long, uh, if there is a crash, there's most likely a really solid reason why there's a crash. Lah. Maybe year-on-year -year earnings is bad. Year-on-year -year earnings is uh, missing by, by 40 over percent or, or somebody announced sanction or a certain industry. Like recently, recently why the semiconductor industry has, has, has tanked, uh, partly because there is a restriction on uh, Biden just said something about uh, that semiconductors cannot, do, cannot have their they must bring, they want to create jobs back in America, so they don't want them to have their plants outside of America, too many of their plants outside of America, something like that. All right, and US is a very, it's a very labor intensive industry. Yeah. Okay, wait, let me just scroll through. I think we have pretty much covered all the questions here. Uh, okay, Ken, uh, that's pretty much all the questions. Thank you for your time, Tom. And for to wrap this up, um, again, technical analysis is a, is a huge topic. Uh, I myself have a book on technical analysis. It's a 500-page book, and I have not read everything. I, I'm, using, I'm using that book myself as more like a dictionary. Uh, 
Um, so to give you guys some extra reading, I'll, I'll give you guys some keywords that you can go back and research on to do more extra reading on your own. Okay, here goes oscillators, chart patterns, candlestick patterns, candlestick reversals, and continuations. And then you can study other people trade ideas. You just you know Google them, search the term trade ideas. You're able to 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 see how how people have their trade ideas. Just just everything that you read online, right? Read it with a pinch of salt because we have more webinars coming in the later weeks to teach you how to digest all this information, right? So. Remember, uh, as what Tom mentioned, TA leaves clues in the market. Whatever people do, it leaves a footprint, and that footprint is embedded in TA. This, this so-called footprint will come in the form of a pattern. And with a trained eye, you'll be able to see these footprints and find clues as to where the market is headed. So, TA applies everywhere. Uh, Tom himself uses TA in futures. You can apply TA in stocks. You can apply TA in FX, in crypto, and also basically anywhere that has a human interaction with price movement. Okay. Now, as, as mentioned, TA is a, is a huge topic, right? So everything that is covered today it is the basic, it is the core. It is also enough to get you started, enough to get you on your ball rolling. Now, and, uh, having said that, right, everything about TA and part of a strategy, everything about a strategy, and how you manage the trade, how to make money, TA forms a very, it only forms a fraction of, of everything. A huge part, the huge, the bigger part of everything comes from trade psychology, risk management. And then again, all these things will be covered in the next upcoming webinar by Bini Ong on Friday on risk management. So guys, stay tuned. And with that, we have come to the end of the session. Thank you everybody for your participation. Thank you, Tom, for uh, staying with us this evening thank you all right with that thank you everybody and now we have come to the end of this see you guys on friday